Do you want to know what has been holding you back from reaching your weight loss goal? In this video, I'm going to talk about eight lies that have been holding you back from reaching your fitness and fat loss goal. Let's begin. Hello friends, my name is Ken Magana from Link to Fitness, where we help you transform your fitness and your health through personal training and online coaching. Here are eight common lies that are sabotaging your efforts to stay lean and trim. Number one, going very low on calories in the hope of losing weight quickly. Going on a very low calorie diet of say below 1200 calories is not only unhealthy, but it is dangerous. Doing this will lead to weight loss failure and all manner of frustrations. Your body will think there's a shortage of calories and so it will work hard to protect itself by making it hard to lose any weight. When you are on a low calorie diet, you'll experience all manner of problems from lightheadedness, headaches, nausea, and trouble concentrating at work. And when this happens, you'll overeat to compensate for eating so little for so long. The weight gain will soon follow, sending you into a cycle of gaining and losing weight. Line number two is that you have to be very strict with your diet to lose weight. If you choose a strict diet that limits the foods you eat by cutting out one or more food groups, you'll get bored and quickly lose interest in your diet. Your body and test buds needs variety. You also need vitamins, minerals, and other nutrients that you can only get by eating a variety of foods. Here is an easy way to find out if your diet is sustainable. Ask yourself, can you stick to the diet for the next six months or even one year? If you cannot do that, then that diet is not the best for you. Line number three is that you should never touch unhealthy foods. Starting your weight loss journey with an intention never to touch unhealthy foods is a bad idea. These will without a doubt lead to failure. You can only stay on track if you allow yourself to eat your favorite unhealthy food once in a while. Moderation is the key to losing weight and keeping it off. So give yourself permission to enjoy that unhealthy food at least once per week. The best way to go about this is to aim to eat clean 80 to 90 percent of the time if you can do this the rest won't matter you can easily shed that body fat without denying yourself line number four is that eating late at night will make you gain weight here's the thing if you eat more than what your body requires you'll gain fat and on the other hand if you eat less than what your body needs and burn more through exercise you lose fat for this reason, it does not matter the time of day you eat. What matters is how much you eat and how much you burn off through physical activity. The quality of food you eat is of far much importance than the time at which you eat that food. Line number five is that you should avoid all snacking to get to your weight loss goal. Snacking is not bad in itself. So long as you're not snacking on junk foods, you can snack without affecting your weight loss in any way. Choosing a small healthy snack between your meals can actually do you good. It will keep your sugar levels stable throughout the day, avoiding the spikes and dips in energy levels that most people experience when they go for long without eating. Snacking in a healthy manner can also discourage you from overeating at your next meal. To feel fuller, Choose fiber-rich foods or snack on nuts such as almonds that are rich in protein and are full of good fats. But snacking is totally optional. If you don't have the time to do it or you don't just like it, then don't do it. There are people who do well on two or three meals per day and they're fine. That is okay. And there are others who prefer eating from between four to six small meals per day. Choose what works for you and double down on that. 
Lie number six is that you can only lose weight by removing all fat from your diet. Most people equate eating fat to gaining fat. Removing fat from your diet is one of the worst mistakes you can do when you're trying to lose weight. Fat is good and necessary for the human body and we all need it on a daily basis. You can do without carbs and you'll be fine. But if you cut fat from your diet, then you notice everything will start to go wrong. Fat provides protection against such things as heart disease and some cancers. For example, omega-3s reduce inflammation in your arteries, help lower blood pressure, decrease the level of triglycerides in the blood, prevent hardening of arteries, and help increase the viscosity of blood. So if you're looking to lose weight, it's important to choose your fats wisely. But be very careful with your portions. This is because fats have more calories per gram compared to carbohydrates and proteins. They're so easy to overeat. And so you must be mindful to avoid any frustrations from a lack of progress from eating too much fat. Line number seven is that you can only lose weight through grit and willpower. Even though self-control, discipline, and willpower are so important for weight loss, there are other factors that also come into play. Your weight is as a result of a variety of factors. Your genes, culture, environment, lifestyle choices, medical history, and even your attitude towards food and exercise. So if you think you're going to use brute force to shed that weight, you're not going to get the results you want. You can instead get your fat loss goal by eating a nutritious diet and working out consistently. So, if you can change the way you eat and move more, you can get to your weight loss goal faster than by using grit and sheer willpower. Line number eight is that cardio is the best way to burn body fat. There is value and a lot of benefits from doing cardiovascular activities, but the belief that cardio is the best way to lose body fat is totally wrong. And this is one of the main reasons why so many people fail when it comes to long-term weight loss. When most people decide to lose weight, they do two things. They cut their calories and start doing cardio. It is true that an hour of cardio burns more calories than an hour of weight training. But using calories burned as a metric to track your weight loss progress is terrible because your body quickly adapts to the cardio. The more cardio you do, the more your body becomes good at it. Your body also becomes good at tearing down your muscles and then becomes so efficient at burning fewer calories. And it does this by slowing your metabolism down. So you end up becoming a smaller but fatter version of yourself. You'll weigh less on the scale, but you still have the same body composition, the same body fat level, and nothing will have changed. You'll be lighter on the scale, but with the same weight and with a slower metabolism. After some time, you reach a point, even though you're doing so much cardio and eating very little, you'll not lose weight at all. As opposed to cardio, you can reach your fat loss goal while looking better, becoming stronger, and even eating more by shifting the bulk of your training from cardio to weight training. So there you have it. Eight lies that have been holding you back from reaching your weight loss goal and how you can fix them. If you found value in this video, be sure to like and subscribe to get more actionable content on fitness and fat loss. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.